check it out folks if you guys didn't know by now pat neely and myself we started a brand new channel called the grilling tv network go by check it out subscribe and enjoy this video you saw two different types of uh mustard right this Caribbean uh, mustard right here from Kelly Hunter. I'll put his information down at the bottom, you know, down in the description box so you guys can like check it out. All of these, I'm gonna tell you truly, they nothing but uh, but just like a binder, right? You can use W sauce or whatever you wanna spray on there to get everything to, you know, to stick to your butt. Super easy. Now this right here, I'll put the ingredients list, you know, down in the description box so you guys can make your own. If not, use any type of uh, rub that'll go good with pork. But what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna go ahead and just score this. I'm gonna do it like this, right? So I just make a few little incisions like this. This is real simple, folks. Real easy to do. I don't care how you do it. You can put your initials in it. It doesn't make no difference. You can make it look like a pineapple. However, and the rub is gonna be everything. Cause look, it's the color. And really it's about that brown sugar. So make sure whatever type of rub you guys get, if you don't follow this, you know what I mean? It is good for, you know, a pork, pork shoulder or something like that, right? Oh, one of the things I wanna tell you is, listen, it's bone in. If you ask me, bone in does a whole lot better as far as like keeping the juices, you know, and uh, just keeping it juicy. And most of all, it keeps everything, you know, together. You know what I mean? Uh, without that, a lot of your fat is just gonna render out. We want it to be as juicy as possible, right? Now, my tool of choice, again, is gonna be this Caribbean mustard. Like I said earlier, you can use regular mustard. I got videos where I've done it with regular mustard. Again, you can go ahead and use W sauce, whatever. Man, you know what? I, I've been in a bind before, and if you wanna go ahead and spray it with uh, apple juice, you can do that too. I like this, because I want you guys to take a look at it. Look, and not to mention that, I tell everybody the regular mustard, you really don't taste that, right? Like you don't, ain't no really, I just don't. You know what I mean? And most people around me to tell me they don't like uh, mustard when I do these butts right here, or I slather, you know, with something, they always say, no, nah, they didn't even, you know, taste it. So this right here does give it like a nice little, uh, a little effect. And I want you to hurry up and look at that right there. See how it's running? It's not too runny. It's kind of thick, but not thick as mustard, right? So now I'm just gonna go ahead and keep my left hand and just go ahead and rub my butt which is really you know a shoulder you know what i mean it's got the neck bone on it already and all of that right and i like to put a generous amount on here you know what i mean then i just pat it on you know you want to get it everywhere just like this okay so now that i got it flipped go ahead look i'm just gonna put just a little bit of you know, this Caribbean mustard on the top right here. Work it inside. You know why? Because I want all of everywhere where I kind of like just scored it. We just want it to be nice and damp. I'm using a pellet grill, right? Listen, it's no different than using a pellet, charcoal, or a smoker. Listen, if you open that up, you're letting a lot of heat out of there, right? So I've already set this for 250 degrees and I got a little button that I can push on here to save for a little bit of extra smoke. I like mine to have a nice little color onto it. I don't mind if it's on the darker side, you know what I mean? And here's the key. I'm getting ready to open this up, hurry up and put this in here and close that lid. And then listen, I'm not gonna mess with it until it, I won't even look back at it until after about three hours, right? So it's super easy. So let's go ahead and get that started. Okay, just to recap what I done, right? Two butts in there, they completely seasoned. And then you can see there was a little bit of dark on that. That's the brown sugar in there that I put in there. Look, I like that color and I like how it caramelizes on the top, right? Now, remember, three hours before I ever even, you know, lift this lid again. I got my extra feature on because I like it to be a little bit on the smoky side. And I'll see you guys in uh, three hours. Check it out. It's been three hours, right? Probably about three hours, 10 minutes, because you know I was moving slow, watching something on TV. What this is, is this is apple cider, right? I, you know what, I'm gonna call this uh, two parts apple cider, one part water. I dilute, dilute it just a little bit. I almost want to take this bottle and just drop it on the ground, because you see that right there? We working, folks. Now, when you spritz, and I'm sorry that I didn't say nothing in the very beginning, it's called spritzing. I don't want to spritz over the top. 
right? I just want to look at the edges all the way around. If I see any dry parts, that's where I want to work with. That's all we want to do. Then I'm going to go ahead and take my finger. Not yet. I don't want to pop my collar yet. We just going to keep on going. And then I'm going to see you guys in probably like another, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to check it again in another hour. Then I'm going to show you how we're going to make it magical. Okay, look, so it's been about an hour, about, about an hour and 20 minutes, right? What I should have said from the beginning is we want to go ahead. See, I got my temp, my thermometer right here. Listen, I want to temp this and I want it to be somewhere right around, I guess I look for anywhere about 165 to 180 before I wrap, right? And when I wrap, I don't use no butcher paper this time. I'm going to be using the foil. Now I'm going to go ahead and just stick this in here like this. Get down in here. And I like what I'm seeing. Okay, so look at how this is. And then when I put my finger right here, you see what I'm seeing? Look, it pushes this down there. But remember, I scored it. So it had a chance to get some of them flavors, you know, down in, in there. And it's on the actual meat, right? So now I'm just going to take my foil, right? And bring this up over the top like this. Bring this back over here like that. And I'm going to kind of like close it. And I'm going to put out one more. That's because I don't want to lose nothing, folks. Then I just kind of like wrap it, keep it nice and tight. And this right here is going to take it the rest of the way. One side of this was at 169. One, the other side was like 165, right? Listen, I'm going to be looking for about 200, 203. When I get close to that, that's when I bring it out, right? Okay, wrapped up nice and tight. Got the aluminum, no leakage, none of that, right? So now we're gonna steam from the inside. Let me quit running my mouth and over talking it. I'm gonna close this so we can build our temp back up. And now I'm gonna be using my meat thermometer because I'm gonna be looking for 200, 203, somewhere close to that. And that's when we're gonna pull them out. And this is why when you follow these instructions, you'll have the best, you know, pulled pork you ever had in your life. Okay, folks, I want you guys to come on here and take a look at this right now. You know what I mean? Uh, I checked this not too long ago. You can see I got a couple of holes in there. I just been checking it, right? Because what I'm looking for, I want to see about 200, 203, something like that. You see that right there? That right there says 201. This is good. This is ready to come off. And I can do the same thing back here. Look, that's 203. This right here is done right. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these off, right? Just go ahead and put these. And I got a 10 on the other side right here. And then we'll, I'm going to take these inside. I'm not going to cover them or nothing like that. I'm going to just wait till they naturally come down. It's probably going to take about 45 minutes to an hour before it just, you know, gets enough where I can handle it. All the juices in the inside. And then we're going to go ahead and shred. Okay, folks, now we're down to the, I guess, just a moment of truth, right? So listen, I let it sit up for about 40 minutes, you know what I mean? Uh, just so it can relax, you know what I mean? It's just like how we do when we do a uh, steak, right? What we wanna do is, I'm gonna grab this right here just so we can see how this pulls out, you know what I mean? So if I pull this like this, I'm just stopping it. You wanna get a clean pull like that, right? You can see that heat on that? This right here is gonna be fire, folks. So when you grab it like this, I want you guys to tell me, look, when I grab it right there, look at that color right there. I don't want to hear none of that stuff about, hey, a pellet grill won't do. You see this right here? Look, that right there, if this ain't what you've been looking for, I don't know what it is. And don't get it twisted, folks. This is still hot. But what I'm doing is I'm just breaking it. I'm going to let it cool just a little bit more, you know what I mean, so I can really get in here and do my thing. we finna dress these up and I'm gonna go ahead and just put some you know on here like this give you guys some ideas you got pulled pork right you know you can make pulled pork you know sandwiches obviously sliders right look at this right here you know you can do pulled pork quesadillas I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a little bit of this and dress this right here over the top but I want to I want you guys to tell me down in the comment section below what else would you guys put yours with Now you guys just see me put these together, mm, or should I say, ah, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and get down, you know what I mean, and do me. All I can say is 
Cheers, folks. I don't know what to say, folks. Look, very, very budget friendly. You know what I mean? Hey, you could feed an army with this. You know, one, two of these pork butts. Look at this right here. You see all of this? Man, and there's so many options, man. You got kids, like I said, you could do, you know, uh, nachos, just whatever you can think of. You got the protein and that's this right here. Hey, with that being said, look, try this. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I hope this cleared up any uh, mystery that you have, but you know, like making these pork butts, super easy. And you know what? I want all of my ladies to get out there and show these men. Hey, tell them this, AB got you. Hey, with that being said, let me just take this time to say thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button, and tell everybody out there, listen, there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. And you know what I got to do. I got two sliders with my name on them, and I'm out.